815. This is your first place here in the bowl and your green champion male. Number 815 from Flint Hills, Buffalo and Alma, Kansas. 815. Whether you're wanting to raise bison yourself or maybe you're just curious as to what these buffalo producers are looking for when they're purchasing their next buffalo, well, this video is for you. The Kansas Buffalo Association puts on an annual sale. Number 388 was also your first place yearly temper. It's comprised of mainly regional bison or buffalo producers that come around and they bring their animals to this sale in Salina, Kansas. Some come from Kansas, some come from as far as Iowa, Colorado. There's all different bison producers that come and meet to sell their animals here. When I went out there this last year, one thing came to mind, a question that I get all the time. What are you really looking for in an animal when you're purchasing it? What are you looking for? Are you looking for health? Are you looking for confirmation? What does confirmation mean? Well, let's talk about some of that. When I first started to raise buffalo, a mentor of mine told me what I was looking for in confirmation and what confirmation means is the overall look of the animal. If everything basically conforms to the ideal buffalo. But what he told me I needed to look for was basically three circles. So imagine right behind the buffalo's head is one large circle. And then imagine the belly or the center section is a smaller circle and the hind area is a even smaller circle. If you were to take and draw a line across the top of those circles all the way down in a tapering motion essentially, the line would ideally be as straight as possible. That is an ideal buffalo. A line that's really straight all the way from the hump down to the hind legs. <laughs> I'll tell you what, winter is definitely setting in. It's starting to get cold this week, and we're supposed to have a good cold front come in later this week. It's supposed to be below zero. The buffalo will definitely be fine though. So when I go to an auction or an individual buffalo producer, and I'm looking to add animals onto our property, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a few different things. So the confirmation of the animal would be one of them. Man, it's so cold out here, it's making my eyes water. Anyway, so the confirmation of the animal would be one of them. Like I said, the three circles is kind of an imaginary line. You wanna draw across the back end of that, make sure that's real straight. I wanna look at the feet of the animal. I wanna see if those feet are bowed out too far or if they're standing correctly. An animal that stands up correctly, that doesn't look like it's struggling underneath its weight is a sign of a healthy animal. Another thing I look for is the eyes. Are the eyes clear? Milky or hazy eyes could mean that the buffalo has pink eye or it might just be an indication that there is something wrong in its immune system. There's a lot you can tell just from looking at the eyes. So something else I would wanna be looking for is the overall height of the animal and length of the animal. Is it above average or is it below average? You know, having an average animal is okay, but having a below average animal could mean that there is other issues. It could mean that it might not breed well or it might produce light calves down the road, which is going to be harder to sell and bring a lower price to the next producer. As much as I care about this animal and every other buffalo producer does the same, you really have to look at the numbers. You have to figure out if it's worth it to bring that animal onto your property. I'm a conservationist at heart and many other producers are as well, but the numbers have to work in order to support that animal. The overall thickness of the animal can be a sign that they're in good health. If they have a really thin back end, it could be a genetic issue or it could be a nutrition issue. And one caution I would say is sometimes a really thick animal 
can be hyped up on grain, fed a lot of grain. And when you're purchasing an animal at auction, sometimes you don't get the opportunity to talk to the producer, so you really don't know. But one small tip I would say to look for is to look for the dew claws. When an animal is raised on a lot of grain, their dew claws will grow a little bit longer than the average buffaloes. Just like I've talked about in other videos, a little bit of grain for these buffaloes diet is perfectly fine, but a lot of grain can cause health problems and the meat is not as healthy for us to eat either. 75, 10, 75, 10, 75. When you're looking at purchasing adult cows and you really don't know what you're looking for, something to keep in mind is a little bit of the buffalo's age can be determined by their horns. If you have a cow that the horns curl in quite a bit and almost want to touch in the center or get close to it, well, that could be an older cow. If that's what you're looking for, no problem, but just keep that in mind. Touching on calves, you just want them to look solid and healthy. If all of their red coat has disappeared, then there's a good chance that they can be weaned and they're gonna be perfectly fine out on grass. If you're seeing spots on them of red, like calico, or let's just say they're entirely red, that means that their system is not quite ready to take on the grass. Typically that means they're, they're under the six month mark and you're probably going to need to give them some type of added nutrition other than prairie grass or fescue like alfalfa or oats in order to get their nutritional needs met since the milk has been pulled a little too early. When we talk about what you want to look for in your herd bowl, I'll just tell you what I look for. In number 815, this is your first place here in the bowl and your grand champion male. Number 815 from Flint Hills Buffalo and Alma. I look for a really tall frame and a really long frame, similar to what we would in the other animals. Same thing with the eyes, look for clear eyes, and the demeanor of the bull is a really important thing for me. Now I want a bull that's not gonna be too aggressive and it's going to be fairly even tempered. Why do I want that? Well, that's because I'm out with the animals quite a bit. We try to rotationally graze out here on Broken Arrow Bison, and I don't want a bull that's gonna be really aggressive when I'm out in the field. But I will say this, that the aggressive bulls, and this kind of goes in a general rule with other animals too, the aggressive bulls, sometimes those can be the best to breed because they have so much aggression and testosterone inside them, they can breed really well. And that can, not always, but can translate into an animal that breeds well and has really good genetics. So there's a little bit of a balance. You want an animal that's really big, breeds well, that has a really good generations to come out of that animal, but for us, I want one that's a little bit more even tempered. Not to say I would never purchase some of those really aggressive bulls, maybe on a larger ranch, that can fit well. But if you're first starting out, I would probably try to find an even tempered bull, and not just the bull, but the cows too. The Kansas Buffalo Association does a really good job at putting on an incredible auction. I love being able to go out there and see all the animals. This last time I went out there, they had over 500 animals out there. But when you're first getting started and you wanna purchase animals, I would highly recommend, even when you're purchasing them at an auction like this sale, get to know the producers. And a lot of times, the producers are at the sales. So come early, talk to the producers themselves, find out how they treat their animals and what they do. That way you've got a really good understanding 
of what you're getting and what you're getting ready to purchase and get into. But enough about my opinion, let's listen to some other producers and see what they look for when they're purchasing animals. For calves, a lot of it comes down to size. You know, in the first six, seven months of life, you want to see those who, who grew the best. Um, you're looking for, you know, shape and size, confirmation. There's nothing kind of off or abnormal about their shape and size. Uh, but when it comes to calves, you know, those that grow the biggest will make you the most money. Uh, those who grow the biggest have the best genetics. If you keep them from breeding, they're going to have calves that grow fast. Is there any advantages to purchasing from certain different producers uh, as opposed to others, or are you really focused on the animal that's presented? Usually focus on the animal presented, although there is value. Some producers do a great job of record keeping. You know, they know that they've, they've uh, DNA tested their herd. They know their bloodlines. Um, they, I, I think there's value to be said in those who keep good records and, and can present those records when they sell you an animal. Um, but if you come to an auction like this, uh, you're just you're looking for those traits, size, confirmation that, that you think are going to develop into the best animal for your herd. If you were first starting out, um, what would you recommend to these producers? Calves, yearlings, adults? <clears throat> we bought our ranch turnkey, so we already had it all. Cows, calves, breeding bulls. If you're just starting off though, um, you know, yearling heifers, yearlings in general, are, are still pretty easy to deal with. Um, they usually don't have bad attitudes yet, and they respond to you pretty well. Uh, calves are fine if you can also pair them with some older animals. I don't know if I'd throw a bunch of calves out in the pasture together. They'd probably do just fine, but having a little bit of age, yeah. uh, I think is, is helpful. Like I said, I got lucky. We bought a ranch turnkey, so I didn't have to experience any of that. So if you can find someone you know, selling a complete operation that's been established, save yourself a headache and just move right in. I think a lot for me is temperament. I'm looking at their temperament. You know, Are they super skittish? Are they relaxed? Um, Health-wise, I'm looking at their eyes. You know, do they have pink eye problems? Is there crust in their eyes? Generally, their eyes will kind of give you some indication of, I think, how they're feeling to some degree. You know, are they kind of slouched over? Their eyes look sunken in, or they look vibrant and alive. Confirmation, you know, with calves, it's, it's a little hard to tell, but, you know, just generally, do they look like they're built well? Do they have any splotches in their hair? You know, is there anything going on body-wise with them? For a new producer, what would you recommend getting started? Would you recommend calves? Would you recommend yearlings? Would calves, 100%. Able? It really depends on your background. Like if you have a strong cattle background, you've been working on animals most of your life, you can probably start with, with yearlings. If you're relatively new to, to livestock and ranching in general, absolutely start with calves. It's just, you're gonna grow with the animals, you're gonna learn with the animals, and you don't necessarily have to have all the handling facilities and corrals that you would need uh, day one like you would with say yearlings or two-year-olds. Get it started, I'd talk to as many people as you can. Uh, there's a wealth of knowledge here with the Kansas Buffalo Association or even the National Bison Association. People are apt to, to share their, their experiences and their expertise and you know, just glean from it what you can and try to apply it to what you're trying to do in your own situation. I think you'll be okay. Mainly focus on the, the back legs, um, some straightness there, a nice back on them, flat slope rather than like a, not a curve in it. And, you know, so, a little size, you know, not get something that's too peewee-ish. Any personality traits or anything like that? Y yeah, uh, I mean, if they're too amped up, you don't want them too amped up. Uh, you know, hopefully something more calm than not, but sometimes that's kind of hard to tell with calves, I feel like. I would say start with calves in a corral. Young calves to yearlings would be my recommendation. Uh, we did get lucky and uh, not right out of the gate, but I guess the third group of animals we bought were some bred cows and I think we got pretty lucky. They came from good ranches and they were uh, pretty calm, really good animals. When you're first getting started raising buffalo, it can be a daunting task. And it was for me, and I think it can be for quite a few other people also. Don't be overly intimidated. I mean, always be cautious, but I think at first I was definitely more intimidated than need be. 
and but you at the same time you always want to have your eyes open you don't want to turn your back on them be cautious uh common sense goes a long ways and if you've never been around any livestock i'd say just uh learn from other producers and get an education before you start when i first started raising buffalo one of the biggest mistakes that i made was not reaching out to other producers. I thought that they would see me as competition and man was I wrong. I also thought that since they had all of these animals and they had all this land, they were gonna look down on someone who was just getting started and had nothing. And that couldn't have been further from the truth because one thing I failed to realize was that everyone has to start somewhere. I'm not getting sponsored for this video at all, but I wanna say a big thanks to the Kansas Buffalo Association and the National Bison Association. Those two organizations were very instrumental in the start of our journey 10 years ago. The National Bison Association offered online courses and I went through everything that they had. And the Kansas Association, the first two buffalo that we ever purchased, was at this Salina sale in Salina, Kansas about 10 years ago. It definitely brought back a lot of memories heading out there this year. So who knows, maybe we'll see you guys at next year's sale.